Okay, so today we're going to be talking about some of my favorite villains. And what I mean by that, I don't mean villains that I love. I mean some of what are, in my opinion, the most well-crafted villains. People who are... <laughs> just get to me, just really get to me. I have, this is going to be a top five list. I have five villains here with some honorable mentions as well. This will also be a spoiler free list. So I will talk about the qualities that make these villains such standout characters to me. Um, and then I will not talk about spoilers for the story at all. And if it's a villain that would be a spoiler to tell you who they are, I just don't use their name. I just talk about the series. So we're gonna start in that direction with the first law because this is one of the villains that I can't tell you the name of because it's not, I can't tell you the name of. This is one of the villains that has stuck with me the most because up to the last moment, I have, I was, I was still kind of tracking with them. I still wasn't fully believing that they were truly villainous. You know, like this is, this is a series of morally gray characters. We have a lot of characters doing a lot of bad things, but there's humanity to them. It's complex character stuff. It's not just the good guys and the bad guys. And this character, which if you've read the series, you probably just know who I'm talking about, up to the very end, I was like, it's not that bad. Until, until you know, until you know. And then it's like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I mean, this person was toying with everybody in the story with so little effort. And when it all came together in my mind, when I realized I was just in shock. I mean, I there are some amazing manipulators. There are amazing, there are people, there are characters that can do this kind of stuff in stories that I, the reader, get to see, but I too was manipulated and I was just one of, one of the best villains that has stuck with me the longest. Next up, we have a recent read and that's from the Live Ship trilogy and his name is Kyle. Kyle is a character that is just, he just sucks. He's not even a villain. Like the true villain of the story, I don't know, I haven't read all three books, but I would say Kenneth is more of a villain. He's, he's the one who's trying to become the pirate king, who is manipulating everybody and who is doing bad things. Everything around the corner is bad, but Kyle, I managed to hate more because he's such a real character type where he can just openly be so disrespectful and mean and cruel to the people in his life while still manipulating everybody around him to the and intimidating everybody around him to the point that they just submit they just take it and some of the people that he's mean to like his freaking son I'm so mad at him. I'm so mad at him for some of the things that he says and does. And it's like, no matter how much this story humbles him, because these stories humble their characters, no matter how many, how much the story humbles him, he will not change. He refuses. I haven't read the whole series, so I don't know. He refuses to change. He's so stubbornly thinks that he's the only correct person. He's not a villain per se, but he's a villain to me and to I think every reader where he can, he can manipulate a situation to make people let him lead, but he doesn't deserve it. Nothing is owed to him and in fact push him off the boat. And I just, I just, he's such a human character. Like I, I've met Kyle's in my life and he gets too much page time. I can, I can kick people out of my life. I can't kick him out of the book. <sighs> Hop wrote a very good, he, she wrote a hateable character very well. Next up we have Doflamingo from one Piece. I just, I just, I actually, you know what? I have a whole video for him. I'll link it if you care. But he is another character that every time he's on the page, 
anger boils inside of me. He's a character that got a backstory. I understand his motivations, where he comes from and what made him the way he is. It makes sense to me. And that only makes me hate him more because now, now he's not just someone that I hate. He's someone that I understand and that I don't, I don't, Oh, I don't want, I don't want to understand him. I don't want to know his motivations. I don't want to see what got him to be this way. I just want to hate him. But now I can see him as this complex character that his, his arc makes sense to me. And I don't appreciate you humanizing him, Oda. I don't mean that. It's great. It's great storytelling. I hate him. And then we have, what's his name? Doro. Ugh. Then we have Doro from Wild Seed. So Anyawu uh, is a shapeshifter and she's immortal. And Doro is, he, he's a collector of people. And he's like created his own society that he rules over, that he controls, that he's the head of, of these, um, of these people with abilities. And so he hunted down, he he went after Anyawu. Anyway, he's the type, he's the type of character that is also a very good manipulator. He's the type that he can he can convince everyone else that they're wrong. He can commit the the, the biggest atrocities and convince everyone that they're the one in the wrong. And if they would dare to not believe him, if they would dare to fight him just the tiniest bit, then he has no problem just harming them and those they love. He's, th he's, the, he's so cruel and he's so evil and I hate him so much. Reading this book, it was genuinely hard because Anyawu is truly a wonderful person and Doro is not. But that was the point. Uh, next, I have another villain that I can't say the name of because she doesn't come in until the second half of this chonker of a book. So Mask of Mirrors is a book that I had kind of mixed feelings on actually same for Wild Seed. But anyway, Mask of Mirrors is a, is a book that I had kind of mixed feelings on. It is such a slow, it's such a long setup. You have to read about half the book before it truly gets going. The world building, the politicking, it's all very, very well done, but I just didn't feel like I had anything to keep me going other than the fact that it was a buddy read until the second half and then the second half was spectacular. So mixed feelings on this one. All that said, oh my goodness. So there are a couple, there are a lot of moving pieces in this book. It's a very complex story. And there's a couple of people who you could call antagonists, but there is one, there is one that gave me chills. Her ruthlessness, her determination to get what she wants and what she will sacrifice for it. And there was one scene in particular that legitimately freaked me out when we were in it freaked me out. It didn't help that I was listening to the audiobook. Freaked me out. It was such a high, intense, creepy scene. Excellent antagonist, excellent villain. Great job. I just filmed another video that's coming out after this one, reacting to your unpopular opinions. I did a community tab. People posted their unpopular opinions and I, uh, and I responded, I reacted. And there was, there was a bit of discussion, especially at the beginning of the video about villains and what makes a good villain and, and what kind of villains people want, blah, blah. And it's funny because for me, it's all about this type of villain. It's all about, um, the, the ones that I understand, the ones whose motivations make sense to me, or the ones where the type of character that they are, it's just like the person of them. Those are the ones that stick with me the most. Not even necessarily the ones that cause the most devastation in their path. The ones that stick with me the most, the ones that give me chills, the ones that kind of haunt me a little bit are the ones that are very, very human. They're not just 
evil. They're just, they, I see them. I, I feel like I know them and I can, I can palpably feel the way they would affect me if I actually had to deal with them. And that's terrifying stuff. Like the kind of villain that I actually wonder, could I be manipulated by you? Uh-uh, get them out, get them away from me, get them away. Those are some well-crafted villains for me. That's what I think. Also, I'm gonna do some honorable mentions here because there were a couple of villains that I wanted to mention that I felt like I couldn't even discuss even a little bit without giving spoilers away. One from Hunter Hunter, which I think if, I think if you know, you know. You, probably know who I'm talking about. I just couldn't think of a way to discuss this person without saying too much. And then as well as Malazan, Malazan's such a hard series to discuss spoiler free anyway, because there's so much going on. And I just didn't, I just couldn't think of a way to talk about one character in particular without spoilers. So just in my heart, they're here too. Actually really, there's, there's a lot of fantastic uh, villains out there, but I wanted to do a quick list of some really what I think are some very well-crafted villains, but I'd also love to hear from you. Who are some of your favorite villains? What kind of villain do you love to see the most or hate to see the most? What kind of villains boil your blood the fastest? I would love to read about those in the comments. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here, Tuesdays and Thursdays on the second channel, which is linked in the description. I'll see you again soon. Bye.